We got some exciting stuff today. Dr. Disrespects set up some interesting F1 facts, even some Canadian stuff, as well as Modern Warfare 2 Remastered alongside everything you guys have sent me. Let's see what the internet's got cooking up. Shall we? When trying to be nice goes oh, okay. wrong. Yeah, I'm still here, bit. Uh, there's a cluster mine on the stairs. Be careful, bud. Oh, is he even trying I, I to be told nice? You. Runs into it again, or is he just okay? shooting it? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> I killed. I okay. I killed somebody on accident. That wasn't my intention. I was trying to guard the box. A few moments later, completed the stronghold for him. Got the black sight key. Looks it's like you. he. Uh, Come back. Where are you? Get in. Oh. Oh my gosh, dude. No. <laughs> That's sometimes that's how it goes, you know? <laughs> you try and be nice, and it just doesn't work out. No! <laughs> the prox really chat as well, fight, dude. dude. New Easter egg on Ashika Island. It is in the power plant. You're going to want to go to the bottom and go through the tunnel here. There are four switches. Yeah! You have to switch on in this order. Switch on the first one, then the second one then the third one in the middle here and then finally the fourth one this is an easy one to open this door compared to, to the a secret room challenges that, that were on rebirth cash, island that you had to do kill streaks these ones are a lot simpler from what i've seen so far for all the different challenges that come up on the map which i think is good you know i think it'd be cool to see some harder secret easter eggs like i, I don't know would you consider that really an easter egg i guess it kind of is right uh, it kind of feels more like a main feature than an Easter egg from what they used to do crazy Easter eggs, man. It feels like they haven't been as crazy in this game so far. Easy solo win here. Let's see what we got. This is the easiest way to win every solo game in Warzone 2. So first you want to find a gas station that's in center circle and close to a buy. Get enough okay. money to buy a loadout. Then you're going to want to pick a building in a room that only has one way in. And then you just kind of wait. This does work, by the way. I've done this in even back in Warzone 1. Even on Rebirth, you go to the center zone. I usually would, like, leave. I'd go, you know, have a snack, come back. Hey, he's making a smoothie. Good use of your time. He's cooking a burger. It does work. I've gone and eaten the meal. Okay. Give me right. Haircut's a little... Oh. Seven circle. Well, Guess it's I gotta a do little extreme. Now. No way does he still win this dude. God. Trash, bro. He's winning this dude. He won it. Too easy. This is the easiest way to win. <laughs> this is how I used to practice my end games though, for real. I, I would just go AFK, come back after like 10, 15 minutes. It's towards the end game. Then I'd practice the end game. There you go, man. Wow. What a play. Okay, so this is from uh, Guy Beam, obviously. Dr. Disrespect on his actual Twitter account, separate from his Dr. Disrespect account. Occasionally, he posts on it, but he posted a photo of his actual setup from his, uh, what is it, a $10 million, $20, $50 million arena that he's now at, whatever it is. He's got two giant green screens here. He's got his... Uh, wig he's got the headphones he's got the the golf clubs here what i was surprised by is just how simple his setup is for the level of production value of what he puts out now clearly these walls look like they're just straight painted this one looks like it's even uh, done a little bit more but look it's just a brio cam on the top that's i'm sure reaching over to here that gives the perspective so when he goes into the to the locker room, dancing, when he's in the garage, the arcade, all the different scenes and everything he's got set up. But it's that simple of a setup with just three monitors. You know, you'd think that he would go even uh, crazier with it, but with the green screen, it does so much of it for him. He doesn't even really need it. Yeah, this is the arena. Got it. He's got his golden play button up there, the silver button. Looks like some other awards over here. But he keeps it that simple. Especially for the amount of production value that he has. Like for a show, for an audience of what he has, you would think that it would be, you know, especially with some of what these other guys are doing. They're buying entire, entire buildings. They have entire team set up. You could still do, like, most of my stuff is also remote. But uh, it's kind of cool to see behind it. Obviously, we could see some of it in the reflection of his glasses. 
probably could organize your desk a little bit more there though doc it's a bit of a mess but he loves his job so what what can you say uh, i couldn't agree with him more on that one i like that Oh my gosh. Have you seen this? We've seen driving rigs. This is a flight sim rig. If if you just saw this, would you not think that this is an actual plane? This is a sim rig. He's got the monitors behind this. A full cockpit in his house. He's even got the passenger seats behind it. If you want to just chill back while uh, while the guys up front fly in the plane. This is so cool. The double seat. This is insane. All of the different monitoring stuff, the switches, all the board is lit up with all the like this looks as real as I've ever seen a cockpit walking into the back of the plane. Okay, and, and he's sitting in one of those seats back there that he's got along for him. Have you, have and he's got both seats. <laughs> Incredible. This is the first look at Modern Warfare 2 Remastered multiplayer. A couple of quick disclaimers. Now this we're going to have to this try, right? This is not right? an official Activision release. I don't know if we can, though. It is a mod that is being created on PC. The exactly. It's a, of the it's, it's a mod. Remastered it's not H1 like a... ...MW2 Campaign Remastered H2 mods are emulation, assets right? from the Campaign Remaster into the Modern Warfare Remastered H1 client This looks on good. PC. So far, the Look first three maps of I can't Terminal, believe. High Rise, and Karachi have already been ported over, with plenty more to come soon. This still may be the closest thing to a classic Modern Warfare 2 Remaster that we may ever get. Yeah. More information is up on my YouTube channel if you want it. Well, and even the fact that they haven't dropped these maps that they said they were going to drop. Now, maybe they're waiting for Season 3, Season 4. Like, we have High Rise. We have Terminal. They're on the Battle Royale map, but they haven't really, at least to my knowledge, been implemented for multiplayer yet either. But this, of course, will bring back all the classic guns. I mean, this could be fun. This could be fun. It's a mod that's being worked on. I kind of want to check it out. Do we have any Canadians uh, in chat that can confirm this or not? It sounds so accurate, but we'll I don't it's know. It's snowing. I've got an amazing how the Canadian accent show. works. And I still know how to party. And it's kind of like, it's called, linguistically, it's called the Canadian rise, which is, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, then it goes down. And that means it's your turn to talk. So it's like, the other day, a guy came up to me, and he was really mad. Now it's your turn to talk because I went down. Because I play, I play with quite a few Canadians, you know, Acolyte first, the top of mind here. And I noticed, you know, he used to get very frustrated when we played together because I would talk too it's much. You know, at the and, end. and so every statement. Maybe this is part of it. I was, I was going at the wrong time. Maybe I gotta listen for the inflection. And if he's going up still, he's still on the mode to keep talking about a vote. And then he goes down. And then it's my turn. Because I think he takes a little pause, and maybe I interject too soon when he's still talking. I got to talk to him about that. I didn't know if this is true. People are saying always. Yeah, so it's here. Yes, look, even even have the Canadian flag. But maybe this is just like old-timey stuff. Like, is this too stereotypical of it? Is it not real? Is it? Or maybe it's just like, yeah, no, it's, you know, people are patient. They wait their turn to talk. Let me see what some of the comments say here. Canadian here, I've never noticed this before. See? Is it true? I don't know. Is this what caused the beef? That could be what caused the beef. I don't know. Keanu's a perfect example of a Canadian here. As a Canadian, I always wonder why people talk about Wayne's World's accent and I never noticed. Now it makes sense. Uh, it's called ups, Upspeak. Is this a Commonwealth thing? Aussies do the same thing. Everything sounds like a question. Uh, I gotta figure out, like, I almost, I know there's people who even do, like, coaching for accents, you know, for, like, actors do a lot of this so they can learn how to, uh, it's a little regional, too, he says, okay, but I feel like there is an aspect where maybe we could, or, or people who do, like, impressions of, of people, they would know this better, um, I feel like I've, I, maybe I should get a coach, work on some of my accents, because mine are pretty bad. Did are you guys ready for a crazy F1 fact? Part of Formula One. 
So how does it work? Spy Basically, photography. Every single team on the grid employs a spy photographer. And this isn't just happening in Formula One. NASCAR uses spy photographers, IndyCar uses spy photographers, MSA WeatherTech uses spy photographers, World Endurance Championship uses spy photographers. It's happening in lots of different series. It's a real life Once spy the team job. Once a spy photographer, it's basically our job to take pictures of different parts of the cars that can be upgraded, side pods, noses, diffusers, floor area, all those things, and we'll send those pictures back to the factory where the aerodynamicists and development teams will then dissect them and look at them and see if it's something they can apply to their own car to make it faster. And now you know that Formula One teams utilize spy photographers to make their cars faster. You're welcome. But this is on the actual track, right? Like, this isn't going to be people sneaking into facilities taking shots. But I, but that's the thing. Since this is all public, it makes a lot of sense to me, but I never I never really thought about it. You take some high-quality shots of all of the different cars, know exactly what they're using, see what you could steal and implement into your own stuff, at least what is publicly available for it. They're all in a competition to make the best cars for it. It makes sense. And this guy, I mean, I've been following this guy for a while now. I've seen a couple of his... Um, uh, F1 photography information and stuff, but I never knew that. But it does make a lot of sense. How many of you guys knew that, though? That's the question. And then, yes! This was it! I, 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 I didn't know really lanes here. how the they raced. Dirt trucks, especially, you know, you're, you you might run into each other. Some of you guys were saying that drift was a lot more style as well. But they have separate... Exactly, he's explaining it. I'll replay that bit there. Hold on. At the green flag, but they are side by side. They will go to two different lanes here. This is the split. Here we go. We're underway at Frozen Rush. For 2016. Now, the way the courses are set up, you see right Green's getting a big advantage here, but that's by design. That lane is quicker, but then they will flip flop and run the opposite lanes on the second lap. So essentially, they'll get to the finish potentially side by side. And here's a look at the top bolt. I just this did my RJ first uh, dirt racing on iRacing now. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was way harder than I thought it was going to be. But I. Uh, Perfection. He sets it up in I couldn't even believe turn. it. We're going to be watching that all day long. And now they will switch lanes. The chicane in racing terms. CJ looks much more aggressive in the chicane. And he's going to come out with the advantage. So CJ with the lead as they head down. Oh, my God. Whoa, RJ almost has a bit of a tank swapper. They're, they're yeah, legitimately sideways, flying. Like, I've seen, I think I've seen some quarter. of this in the X Games as well. He's going to go into the bracket. LCQ winner. But I feel like on snow it's even it's even cooler. That looked uh that looked incredible. But there it is. The roundup, the recap, viral clips that have come across my desk here in my uh, you know, in my office that you guys have sent me. Thank you so much for sending them and uh tagging me and <laughs> we'll keep it running. Thanks so much for watching. Stellman64 over and out. <laughs>